tell me the sci- you're not you're not a stranger to sci-fi genre. You've done some sci-fi before. How is this different from what you what you've done before, just in general, and also in some of your cinematic? What I love about this one in particular is the fact that this one takes it from now to two hundred years. In my humble opinion, it's one of the more Star Trek and Matrix, one of my favorites of all times, which was very close to reality. This one is the nearest to the truth that I have read or you know, watched. And it's it's amazing how it's going to take it from here and into 200 years from now, and it's uh, suggesting uh, that whatever is happening today, its ripple effect, it's going to harm your children or the children of your children. Be careful. My character, Christian Alasarola, is her title is Secretary of Under Deputy of the United Nations, but her knowledge in politics exceeds her title. She keeps saying, Earth must go first. Do not abuse resources on Earth. Use it. Moderation, moderation, moderation. Do not abuse it. And it's amazing. I've always believed that um, art, true art, does not answer questions. It brings about quite a lot of questions. It does not answer questions. This one, entertaining, engaging, uh, it has its own political drama, political divisions which still exist. I'm glad we don't, we don't see any uh, interracial problems. But political divisions still exist, we still have problems. But it's amazing how all of this reads so well, it's so relatively speaking for today's All the audience needs to do is to answer their own questions, because the show is doing it. The show will show you an hour of this space drama, as they call it, or political space drama, and then you're like, ooh, I was so engaging, I was entertained. Ooh, really? Out of water? We have to water wars? We have to uh, import ice from other planets? What is this? It's happening, it's already happening. There's a dialogue. In, the, in this TV series, episode 5, which I love and adore and I cannot forget. I ask a politician friend of mine who lives on Mars. I don't like him being on Mars. I say, why don't you live on Earth? He says, look, I like the environment. I say, Albuquerque looks the same. And he goes, look, we had a garden, we turned it into a rock. They inherited a rock through a common road. They turned it into a garden. After five months, I go back to Los Angeles where I live in a gated community. I receive a letter from Homeowners Association. Get rid of your plants, you won't be able to save them. You can only water your plants twice a week. Grass is already yellow, dead. Plants twice a week. Only. How could you water your roses twice a week? Only Monday, Friday, Monday and Friday. So I had to call my gardener and I said, Charge, you can have the plants, you can't keep them anymore. The gate is telling us, community is telling us, we can't keep them. He comes and he says, what about the pots? I said, you can take the pots too. But I have no use for the pots now. He leaves, I turn around and look at my so-called garden. And I'm like, hey, it's a rock. We're turning it into a rock. It's already happening. It's just for us to become aware of what is going on. The only way of, of preventing this is awareness. To become aware. And look, I understand where we're advanced, we're, we're dealing with the best advanced technological gadgets. You know. We are the first people who have understood this. But our mission is to relate this to the others. <laughs>